I've mentioned in previous videos that I spend a lot of time sitting in coffee shops staring into space, <laughs> usually staring out the window watching the world happen. Or if uh, the weather permits it, I like to sit outside and watch people go by. I'm not particularly bothered by loud noise or crowds or anything. Um, but my favorite times are generally when I'm sitting by myself and I'm not talking to anybody. The staff and regulars at the cafes that I frequent are used to my habits. Um, they see me just sitting there staring and probably think it's a bit odd, but if you understand the dynamics of uh, the, well, I guess what one could loosely call coffee house society, um, it's not uncommon to see people with particular habits that they repeat day in, day out uh, at the particular cafe that they frequent. So people make allowances for it. It's just so-and-so likes to do this, um, so-and-so does that, but, you know, they work themselves into the general feel of this particular cafe. I guess I'm seen as the pleasantly antisocial oddball who just likes to sit there and meditate. Um, certainly people uh, treat me pleasantly, so I don't think I'm disturbing anybody, but um, I'm sure that at the beginning uh, it got noticed that I would just go in there and stare out the window while I was drinking my coffee. Or I would sit on the sidewalk uh, 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 table and chair and stare or look back and forth and not think or, or not do or say anything. Just sit there and ruminate on what's going on around me. Now, <clears throat> that to me is one of the main pleasures of my existence, believe it or not. This complete waste of time, this complete uh, uh, active, I don't know, what would you call it? Self, uh, self-isolation. Um or going back into oneself or whatever, ruminating, whatever. Um, on occasion, when I have somebody that I have to talk to, somebody that I have to meet, I say, well, I'll be sitting at uh, a table, hopefully at such and such a cafe at such and such a time, and I'll meet you there. We'll meet up and then do whatever we're going to do or say to each other whatever we're going to say to each other or whatever. Now, I go in, I'm... A punctual person. I'm usually on time, and if I'm not, I will generally either call ahead and advise the person that I'm late, or I'd be full of apologies for being late. But I'm sitting in the cafe and I'm waiting for somebody to arrive. First, I'm looking out at an absence in the seat next to me. That seat will be filled by somebody else in good time. Then, say, I wait for 30 minutes. For the first 10 minutes, I'm just anticipating this person's arrival. Uh, the second 10 minutes, I think this person is now 10 minutes late, 10, 15 minutes late, whatever. The absence has become acute, and it's taken on a vaguely uneasy sort of feeling. Angst, maybe. You could call it anticipation, whatever. Uh, say, in the third 10 minutes, I am either angry or discombobulated or whatever over the fact that this person has not shown up. Um, in all three cases, I'm anticipating someone's arrival, I'm wondering why they haven't arrived, or, and finally, I'm reacting to the fact that they didn't show up at all. None of this is the same thing as just sitting in the cafe by myself with no expectations of anything. Now, this little scenario isn't mine. It's Sartre's experience, but it kind of chimes in well with my own habits, my own lifestyle. Um, in other words, the overall feel, the overall value of me sitting in that cafe is completely different uh, depending on the circumstances. When I'm by myself, it's generally a very peaceful, very pleasant thing, where I'm just, I don't know, in a state of meditation, I guess, being whatever, I don't know. But it's nice. I like to do it, and I actively seek out opportunities to do that. If somebody else is involved, I've, I've quite definitely surrendered some of my autonomy there. And um, the person, uh, the, the, my ability to influence 
my mental states has been to a certain extent handed to someone else. Their actions impact upon my the quality of my experience. It's unpleasant when I am anticipating someone else's arrival and they don't show up, or they're late, or I start to worry. The inner peace is disturbed. The enjoyment of this situation is reduced. Consequently, um, the actual overall feel of the experience is completely different. Now, let's say, however, that this person does show up, that it's a person that I've wanted to see for a long time. For the first ten minutes, say, I anticipate their arrival. Uh, the second ten minutes, they start to worry me because they're not showing up, but they finally do arrive. <laughs> um, perhaps my enjoyment of that person's company is then higher than it would have otherwise have been because I was threatened, as it were, with that person's absence. But the first two scenarios are the best, if you ask me. The one where I'm sitting by myself and enjoying myself, and the second when I'm just awaiting someone else's an, uh, arrival and they don't arrive. <clears throat> That's an interesting one, because overtly the circumstances are identical, but uh, ultimately the experiences are completely different. What that means, um, as far as I can see, is my intervention, the intervention of my will, or perhaps it's, I won't say subversion, but the surrender of some of it to someone else has an effect on the quality of my experience. When I'm sitting by myself staring at the world go by out the window, I have no requirements from the outside world. It can't really influence me one way or another. Well, it can. If so suddenly somebody walked up, picked up my, my cup of coffee, and threw it in my face, I suppose that could happen. That that could create. Uh, a negative experience, uh, but barring that, there's no expectations in my mind for anything to happen. There's no fear that something is going to happen. In the scenario where I'm anticipating someone's arrival and they don't show up, there are both. There's a little bit of angst and there is some um, expectation that someone else will show up, so my experience is contingent upon issues that are fundamentally beyond my control. So, <clears throat> this would lead me to conclude that the intervention of the human will can and does influence quality. It can and does influence value. Uh, what's going on in here um, can intervene to alter my experience of things, my qualia. Um, the influence on my experience is not just coming from the outside, it's coming from the inside. This is what I'm getting at.